Let's turn now to the coronavirus. Case numbers continue to improve here in the state of Indiana, with the state reporting fewer than 1,000 cases several days this past week. That's the first time since October that's happened. Also, look at the difference in the county spread map from just a few weeks ago. Now several counties in blue. A few weeks back, most of the state was in red. Health officials say that's no reason to let up on the precautions we're taking, which they say are obviously working. This as the state continues to wait on more vaccine shipments. Last week's weather forcing a number of vaccination appointments to be rescheduled. It also led to delays getting this week's shipment of Moderna vaccine as weather caused problems all across the country, especially down in Texas. The situation there turned disastrous this week with rolling power outages and other weather related emergencies, bringing a lot of tough questions about the state's power grid. Meantime, the focus in the nation's capital has been on the coronavirus relief talks and the efforts to expand vaccinations to more Americans in additional age groups or other essential workers like teachers. Washington correspondent Jesse Turnor has the latest on what President Biden and key health officials are saying now. Jesse? As the FDA continues to evaluate the country's third coronavirus vaccine, the White House says it's trying to make the most of what the U.S. currently has. By the end of July, we'll have over 600 million doses. President Biden promised the American people COVID-19 vaccines will be widely available before August. We've acted aggressively to increase the vaccine supply. Jeff Science, the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, said Wednesday the weekly allocations to states will increase from 11 to 13.5 million shots, and pharmacies will receive double the doses, from 1 to 2 million. About 5% of Americans have been uh, vaccinated twice. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky reported new coronavirus cases and hospitalizations continue to decline, but said it's still too early to attribute that to vaccinations alone. We shouldn't rest in that comfort. Dr. Anthony Fauci said he's working with Pfizer and Moderna to determine if a person who has been vaccinated can still spread the disease. There have been some studies that are pointing into a very favorable direction that will have to be verified and corroborated by other studies. In the meantime, Fauci said the most important thing Americans can do, along with masking and social distancing, get vaccinated. His administration recently signed the final contracts to purchase 100 million more doses each of the Pfizer and Moderna shots. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. All right, Jesse, thanks. This week, I had the chance to speak with Heather Boucher, who's on the White House Council of Economic Advisors. I asked her about the stimulus talks in Congress and some of the specific measures included in the president's nearly $2 trillion relief plan. What would that money do? to help in the midst of this pandemic? And how do you respond to those who say it's too much? Well, this package has been calibrated to address the challenges in front of us. You know, it starts off with funds and resources to go to states and communities all across the country to deal with the pandemic, to provide them with the resources to reopen schools safely, to make sure that we get that vaccine out to everybody all across the country, to make sure that people have the protective gear and the support that they need as we sort of weather this crisis through the pandemic. And then the rest of the money is focused on making sure that businesses and families have the resources that they need to help us through this crisis. The money that goes directly to families and to people, that's also going to help the states. Because, you know, for every family that gets a direct check and then can pay their rent and isn't evicted, that's a family that is not homeless in your community who's struggling to figure out what to do next. And that's just one example. But things like making sure that people can put food on the table, making sure they can access health care, that's all going to help state and local budgets as well. So this proposal also includes a hike in the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Indiana Senator Mike Braun called that a, a one-size-fits-all approach that he said wouldn't work insofar as what might work in New York City may not work in Indiana, in his words. He said, quote, you might get some benefits from raising incomes, but you're going to lose, he thinks, between a million and a million and a half jobs in uh, the most hard-hit area in the restaurant industry. How do you respond to that? Well, we have a lot of empirical evidence on what happens when you raise the minimum wage. And mind you, we've had a federal minimum wage since the 1930s, and it's been one minimum wage across every community, and then states and localities uh, sometimes raise it above that level. But what we know from the, the, the large body of empirical research that's been done, especially over the past 20 years, is that when you raise the minimum wage, it 
increases the amount of money that those folks have they can spend in their community it improves family income and earnings right earnings and income um, and at the same time we have not seen uh, large effects on employment um, and that might come as a surprise like well if you raise the wage then obviously firms are going to hire fewer people but in fact what businesses do is um, because this is happening to every business across the economy right it's not just happening to one restaurant it's happening to every single one they can all raise their prices a little bit to be consistent with their competitors but then what you see a lot of businesses doing is using the workers they have a little bit more efficiently and um, what you don't see is these large negative employment effects. The president acknowledging this week it may be difficult to get that minimum wage hike through the Senate. You can see more of that interview on our website this week. We also caught up with Senator Mike Braun, who met with restaurant owners across the state this week. This would force uh, probably uh, the loss of over a million jobs, many of them in the restaurant industry already hard hit. It uh, doesn't reflect the marketplace. Now, this was 